Okay, let's come to the second and in our lecture final characterization of a function via its epigraph. So let's formulate this as a theorem. Let f uh, with extended real values um, be a function. Then the following statements are equivalent. First statement, f is a lower semi-continuous function. Second statement, epigraph of f is a closed set. And third statement is a bit different from what we have seen in convexity because here we can't see the, we can't use the strict epi epigraph. Um, instead, um, we have another characterization for each r in r, so real value, the so-called lower level set. Um, this is the set. Um, the notation is LFR, and we define this as the set of all x, uh, such that f of x is less or equal than r. So it's kind of slices in the epigraph, if you want. Um, all these lower level sets are, are closed. Okay, um, so this is our characterization. This is what um, lower semi-continuity means. If you want, you can, you can imagine that this epigraph, this is the set of all points on or above the graph, is closed. That might help your imagination. Let's prove this. And we, again, have three directions to prove. So let's go from 1 to 2. Let f be LSC. And we want to show the closeness of the epigraph. This means that let xn rn for non-negative n be a sequence in EPF with xn rn convergent to xr in h times r. And we have to show that xr as the limit of this sequence in the epigraph is also an element of the epigraph because this is what closeness means. Okay. Um, Let's show this. So um, let's just um, uh, collect what we have. So we have for all n greater or equal than 0, f of x n less or equal than r n. This is because we have a sequence in the epigraph. And we have convergence of x n to x and r n to r. And convergence here always means as n goes to infinity. What does this mean? So we have the convergence of the two sequences. So for all delta greater than 0, there exists some n of delta um, as a natural number, such that for all n greater or equal than this natural number, uh, the norm of xn minus x is less than delta. So this is the convergence for xn. Then we have the convergence for rn. So for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists some m of epsilon, which is also an element of n, 
course, it can depend on epsilon. Therefore, I write m of epsilon. And for all n greater or equal than m of epsilon, um, Rn is between R minus epsilon and R plus epsilon. So this is basically in, so it means that Rn is in the epsilon uh, neighborhood of R character. So R minus epsilon is the lower bound of this epsilon neighborhood, and R plus epsilon is the upper bound. OK. So now um, we have to use the lower semi-continuity, obviously, because that's the only thing we have left. The lower semi-continuity has to be used in x, um, because that's where we converge to. So by um, the lower semi-continuity of f in x, we have f of x less or equal than the lim inf of f of x prime, where x prime converges to x. Um, we had defined this as the supremum overall. Yeah, in this definition we had delta, but we have two limits here. Uh, in the definition we had epsilon, but we have these two limits here. Therefore, I just write delta. Um, but this is just notation, so it should not matter. OK, um, supremum over delta with the infimum of all these x primes in the delta ball around x. And f of x prime. OK, now let's analyze this with the help, um, first of all, of the first uh, convergence um, expression here. So we have for all delta, there exists some n delta such that um, whenever we are uh, above this index, we are in the delta ball. So uh, instead of taking the infimum over the whole delta ball, we can just take the infimum over this subset of, of xn's, which are in this delta ball. This is a smaller subset, and therefore the infimum, if we restrict this to the smaller subsets, uh, the infimum becomes bigger. So. Uh, the infimum is the smallest, val uh, smallest of those values, and if we restrict this to fewer values, then the infimum only can become bigger. So this is less or equal than supremum delta greater than zero. And now we take the n's which are greater or equal than n of delta because then we are in the delta ball, and we take f of xn. OK, for these f of xn, we know that uh, they are less or equal than rn, so we can restrict this to supremum delta greater than 0, infimum n greater than n of delta. And now we can write Rn here. OK, now we have to, to, uh, we have to involve the other convergence statement here. And uh, we can do this by just, um, by just observing that Rn is always less than r plus epsilon once we, we choose n big enough. And choosing n big enough here means that we uh, can just choose, um, take epsilon greater than 0 arbitrary, which has the advantage that this epsilon is not given by anyone, uh, and neither is, by the way, this delta. Um, so that if this epsilon is not given, we can later just let this epsilon converge to zero uh, once we have a result. Let's see how that go how this um, goes. So let epsilon greater than zero be arbitrary, 
And then we have f of x0. So now we further restrict this infimum here. Um, so here we take the infimum over, since we restrict this further, um, by taking the maximum of n of delta. And uh, here we had m of epsilon. We are still um, less or equal than f, uh, we are still greater or equal than f of x. Um, and since we take the maximum here, um, uh, we can just be um, this. This is this is a more restricted uh, set. So uh, this is certainly bigger than n of delta, and it's also bigger than the, some other thing, but it contains fewer n. So that this infimum must be even bigger than this infimum we had here above. Okay, so since n is greater or equal than m of epsilon, we can, we can use this inequality. And uh, rn is less or equal than r plus epsilon. And we have some supremum over delta and infimum over something, something, something. But in r plus epsilon, no delta and no n appear. So this we can le let, uh, we can take away this delta and the, uh, this n. So this is the result in the end. What does this mean? We have shown that f of x is less or equal than r plus epsilon for arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. So since epsilon was arbitrary, actually it holds f of x less or equal than epsilon. Okay, and this means that uh, not not epsilon, not r, r of course. So f of x less or equal than r. And this means that x r is in the epigraph of f. And this is what we wanted to show. So we wanted to show the closeness. We took some sequence in the epigraph, which converged in, 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 the, in the space h times r. And then we showed that the limit point is not only in this space, but also in this epigraph. OK, let's go from point 2 to point 3. So let EPF be closed. And let um, R be an arbitrary real number. So we have to show that the level set for each R, the lower level set, is closed. Um, so to, to show that, let XN be a sequence in L, F, R. OK, such that x, n converges to x, and x is an element in H. OK. What do we have here? Since x, n is a sequence in this level set, we have f of xn less or equal than r for all n. And therefore, xn r is in epi f for all n. What does this mean? We have a sequence x and r in the epigraph. We have x n to x, and x n therefore converges to 
XR. So XNR converges to XR. Um, so since we have the sequence in the epigraph, this convergent sequence in the epigraph, we know since epif is closed that XR, the limit point, is also in the epigraph, which means that f of x less or equal than r, which means that x is in LFR. And this is what we wanted to show. We had a sequence in LFR, uh, a convergent sequence, and we showed that the limit point is also in LFR. Okay, now the last point, 3 to 1. Now we assume that LFR is closed for all um, for all R, and we have to show that F is a lower semi-continuous function. And we can actually go the other way around. Uh, we can show that um, whenever we have that, the, uh, whenever F is, a, is not lower semi-continuous, then we can show that uh, there must exist some R such that the lower level set is not closed. And by this, we have, um, if, we, if we go back, like uh, we have, uh, whenever all these level sets are closed, then there is no possible way that f is not uh, lower semi-continuous, so f must be lower semi-continuous. Okay, um, so assume to the contrary that f is not lower semi-continuous in some x in h. What do we have then? So then this means that f of x is greater than this lim inf. Which is equal to this supremum infimum, so supremum. Now we don't need two limits, I think, so I uh, just take uh, epsilon here, as in the definition of the of, of, of low semi-continuity. Okay, and what does this mean? Um, here we again have to take care of the edge cases, so this f of x can be plus infinity. Therefore, let's um, let's just uh, let's just insert some r, which coincidentally will also be this this r here, where we prove that the lower level set will not be um, closed. So there exists an, a real number r such that f of x is greater than r, greater than supremum, epsilon greater than zero, infimum, norm of x prime minus x less than epsilon, f of x prime. Okay, so what does this mean? This means the supremum overall epsilon of this expression is less than r. This means that um, this expression is less than r for all epsilon. So for all epsilon greater than zero, the infimum is um, less than r. What does this mean? So what we want to construct a sequence um, in the lower level set of r. 
such that the sequence converges to x and um, the, the sequence is in this lower level set, but the limit point, which turns out to be x, is not in this lower level set. And the limit point x not in the lower level set is already on the board. So we just have to construct our sequence and this can be done by just taking, choosing epsilon equal to, for example, 1 over n. And this means for all n greater than 1 is the, uh, I have to start with 1 here because 1 over 0 is not defined. So for all n there exists some xn um, let's say in h such that xn minus x here is less than 1 over n and um, this infimum is less than r and the infimum is it should be like taken by this xn or this should at least be close enough so um, there must be some point which is close enough such that the, the, this xn will be less or so the, the infimum, the lowest possible value on this ball here is less than r so there must be an element in this ball such that um, the so, such that this satisfies f of xn less or equal than r. Okay, so th this is just by taking epsilon equal to 1 over n, um, if you want. So this epsilon here is just taken like 1 over n. Okay, and by this we know that xn converges to x as n goes to infinity because the, the, the distance to x is bounded by 1 over n and this goes to 0. And we know that um, xn is in LFR. This is by this, ex by, by, by this expression. And we know x is not in L F R by this expression and this is our contradiction we were looking for. So this shows that L F R is not closed. So whenever we have a function which is not lower semi-continuous in some point then we find some real value R such that the level set Lf of r is not closed. Okay, now we have shown 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 1, so this concludes our proof.